News at 6 and 11 o'clock all week long. Channel 7's Keith Radford will show you what you need to know should flames break out in your home. Here is uh, some of what you'll see in fire. Get out alive. It was just a, a lot of smoke and the, and the alarms were going and nobody knew what happened. A, a fella came through the building and said everybody out. With the cold winter weather and wood construction of many homes here, western New York is especially susceptible to fire. We're here at the Erie County Fire Training Academy where firefighters from all over western New York come. They learn how to fight fires when flames break out in your home. Now don't forget, as quickly as you can, get down low. Get down on your hands and knees to the floor. Because the air won't be so hot down here and the deadly choking thick black smoke and fumes will be up higher towards the ceiling. Now there, you can hear the smoke detector has gone off. It only took about 60, maybe 90 seconds for this room to fill up with smoke and you'd be warned by a working smoke detector. The smoke, because of its buoyant nature, would go up to the top of the stairwell and that is where the smoke detector should be located. Now here's another idea. If you're considering possibly building a new home in the near future, you might want to look at the ultimate in fire protection, for a home at least, a built-in sprinkler system. It works pretty much like a smoke detector does, but instead of detecting smoke, it detects heat. Oh, God. I often look at fires and wonder, and now this have really happened. I don't know what happened to my apartment. It's such a nice apartment. <laughs> if fire broke out of your home, you probably wouldn't be able to walk out as easily as that. I'm Keith Radford. Join us all this week on Channel 7 Eyewitness News at 6 and 11 for our special series, Fire, Get Out Alive. It could save your life. Another reminder, Keith's series begins tomorrow night at 6 o'clock here on Eyewitness News and will run all week on both Eyewitness News at 6 and on night. As a joke, Buffalo, unfortunately, is known to some people as the fire city. But believe me, it is no joke at all. All this week on Eyewitness News at 6 and 11, we present Fire, Get Out Alive, a special series aimed at making sure that you know what to do should fire break out in your home. First, here's a little background for you. Last year in Erie County, fire engines roared to more than 1,000 residential fires. More than 260 people injured, nine people perished. 80% of all the fires that break out in America break out in the home, and almost all of those happen when the family is sleeping. You can't smell smoke if you're asleep. You probably think you can, but you can't. It's just like being in the garage, and you leave your car running with the door closed, and the carbon monoxide will knock you out and eventually kill you. If you're asleep in your bed in a fire, chances are you will not wake up, if you don't have a smoke detector to alert you. This is how we envision a fire, like we see in the movies. But here at the Erie County Fire Training Academy, we have recreated what being inside a burning home would really be like. Fire is dark, it's black. The thick, black, choking smoke will begin to curl from the ceiling, work its way down to the floor. It will be very dark. Very important to have a flashlight close to you at your disposal. It will help you be able to cut through this deep smoke and find your way out of the house. So here are four very important things to remember. What you can expect from a fire. Number one, fire is black. You won't be able to see. Number two, the smoke and toxic fumes will kill you, not the flames. Number three, if you inhale the scorching hot air that's produced in a fire, it will kill you instantly. And finally, time. You have very little of it if you want to get out alive. Now, tonight on Eyewitness News Nightcast at 11 o'clock, we will show you just how quickly your home can fill up with smoke if a fire breaks out and how little time you really have to get out safely. Also, if you would like some more information on how to survive a fire, you can send a self-addressed stamped envelope to Get Out Alive, WKBW-TV, 7 Broadcast Plaza, Buffalo, New York, 14202 is the zip, and we'll send you 
these handy pamphlets which are put out by the New York State Office of Fire Protection and the Erie County Emergency Services Division as well. There are all kinds of them. They're very, uh, we've got a whole load of them for you. Thanks to our friends at, in Erie County, and we'd be glad to send them out to you. The value of a series like this cannot be overstated. Uh, it is amazing how little people know about fire. You see it on television, you may see it in person, but... Uh, you'll, you'll see a little bit later in the week, we do a thing on smoke detectors, and uh, of the millions and millions that are installed all over the country, half of them don't work because the battery is either dead or someone took the battery out to put it in a kid's toy and, and never put it back. Shocking. Well, from actors in your home, you have no idea of what is happening until it's too late. Unfortunately, that scenario occurs time and time again in this country. So how can you avoid it from happening to you and your family? Well, tonight we continue our special week-long series, Fire, Get Out Alive. So what we're going to see is as the smoke is generated by the fire, it'll start to rise to the ceiling. Now, to help you understand what a fire is really like, we went to the Erie County Fire Training Academy in Cheektowaga. This is the smokehouse, a building where we purposely set a small fire so it would fill up with smoke, and it didn't take very long. All right, now you can see how quickly this room filled up with smoke. It only took about 90 seconds, two minutes maximum before the smoke detector finally went off. Here are a few very important things to remember. First, it will be dark. The smoke is going to be so thick that you could cut it with a knife, and you can't see. Also, here's one very important thing to remember should fire break out in your home. You cannot smell smoke. So if fire breaks out late at night when you're asleep, the carbon monoxide and the other deadly poisonous toxic fumes emitted will knock you out, will put you into a coma. You'll be dead before you ever have time to wake up and get out of the house. As you can see in this controlled fire, within minutes the entire room will be consumed and the heat is deadly. The temperature will soon reach near 1,000 degrees and you get what is called a flashover. That's the point where everything is so hot it ignites and explodes. Even the smoke catches fire. The room blows out. There's absolutely no chance for survival. Now, tomorrow, as we continue our special series, Fire, Get Out Alive, how much time do you actually have if fire breaks out? Where do most fires begin? And how important is a smoke detector or fire extinguisher? If you'd like more fire safety information, you can send us a self-addressed stamped envelope, and we'll send you a set of pamphlets from the State Division of Fire Safety in the Erie County Emergency Services, the Fire Prevention Division. Get Out Alive, WKBW-TV, 7 Broadcast Plaza, Buffalo, New York, 14202. We'll have a reminder of that address for you once again a little bit later in this newscast. Get out alive. Now, this is a stopwatch, and as everyone knows, it measures time. Well, time is something that you do not have when fire breaks out in your home. Would you know what to do to survive? Two to five minutes from the first flame, and it's all over. If you're still inside a burning home, you're dead. Time. It's something that you really have very little of when fire breaks out in your home. The most important thing, get out as fast as you can. Most people who die in fires die in the first five minutes. This is an awful, awful feeling. Oh, God. I often look at fires and wonder, now, did this really happen? Most fatal residential fires break out when the family is asleep. As long as you have an operable smoke detector and an escape plan that you've practiced with your family, your chances of getting out alive are very good. Now, there are three very important things you must remember should fire break out in your home. Number one, get down close to the ground. Get down on your hands and knees, because down here, the air will not be anywhere as near as hot or as deadly as it is up high. Number one, get down on your hands and knees and crawl. There'll be more light down here as well. Now, the second thing to remember, it's a good idea to keep a flashlight by your bed and make sure the batteries are good. Number three, probably the most important of all, an escape plan. Crawl along the furniture. You can crawl along and feel your way. One very important thing, though, when you get to a door, don't open it automatically and go out. Reach up, put your hand against it like this. If it feels hot, don't open it, because the chances are very good there's a fire just on the other side of it. Try and get to the window. That's probably going to be your best way out. Make sure you have a meeting place when you get out. Now, tomorrow night at 6 o'clock, we are going to show you an actual live home fire drill, so you can see exactly what you have to do 
to survive a fire. If you would like some more information on fire safety, we'll send you these special pamphlets that are put out by the State of New York and the Erie County Emergency Services Fire Safety Division. All you have to do is send us a stamped, self-addressed envelope to Get Out Alive, WKBW-TV, 7 Broadcast Plaza, Buffalo, New York, 14202. Now we'll have that address for you a little bit later, again in this newscast. Even though that was simulated, it must have been a little frightening to be in that situation. Well, it is a little. You lift that mask up a little bit, and that smoke starts to get in there, and you cannot breathe at all. It's just a matter of two or three seconds, and, and uh, you have to put it back on. So it is scary. It's scary. She's got what oh, tonight after you go to bed. Would you know what to do? More importantly, would you know how to lead your family to safety? Well, all you need is a plan. I continue tonight our special week-long series, Fire, Get Out Alive. I thank God in my life when I woke up the house was full of smoke and that smoke detector was talking it woke me up and spared my life if the smoke detector sounds or you smell smoke arouse the rest of the family but keep calm if you have a telephone in your bedroom call the fire department then roll out of bed and quickly get down on the floor now don't forget, as quickly as you can, get down low. Get down on your hands and knees to the floor. Because the air won't be so hot down here, and the deadly, choking, thick black smoke and fumes will be up higher towards the ceiling. If you stand up and breathe, there's a good chance that the air could be 150, 200 degrees or more. will kill you instantly if you inhale that. Get down low and practice your escape plan. Crawl along the floor. Remembering where your various pieces of furniture are, your chairs, tables, whatever. And you should practice this in the daytime with your eyes closed so you get to know. So should something happen, you can do it without even thinking. Crawl along the walls, along the furniture, get to the door or the window and get out as fast as you can. One of the very important things is you're crawling along like this when you get to the door. Don't just open it right away. Stop. Reach up. Make sure that it's not hot. If it's very, very hot and it feels like it's starting to buckle and crumble, don't open the door because the chances are likely there's an intense fire just on the other side of it. Leave it shut. Your best bet is to head towards the window, break the window, and get out. Now, be sure to join us tomorrow night on Eyewitness News at 6 o'clock when I will actually show you a live home fire drill. We're going to show you how quickly and easily you can get out of your home if you have practiced an escape plan. Also now, on Thursday and on Friday, everything you need to know about these fire extinguishers, also smoke detectors. They're very important and they could save your life. Now, if you would like more fire safety information, you can send us a stamped, self-addressed envelope to Get Out Alive, WKBW-TV, 7 Broadcast Plaza, Buffalo, New York, 14202. And we will send you some uh, of the pamphlets that are put out by the state and the Erie County Department of Emergency Services, the Fire Safety Division. They explain everything you need to know. When fire breaks out in a home, and he's been showing us what to do to make sure that we get out alive. Tonight, Keith is in Hamburg with a family prepared in handling a fire emergency. Keith? That's right, Irv. Thanks very much. We are at the home of Bob and Deborah Piotrowski. They have let us come in here tonight, and they're going to show us a live home fire drill. Again, this is all part of our special series, or my special series. It's running all week long, Fire, Get Out Alive. All right, why don't you two go ahead and get set in your bedroom? Also joining us tonight is young Matthew. Uh, Matthew's five years old, and he's going to take part in this one as well. Everything okay there, Matt? Okay, you ready? Let me just get this door closed. Just a reminder, you should sleep at night with your doors closed. So if there is a fire or a fire breaks out, the smoke will accumulate out here and it won't get into the bedrooms. All right, everybody ready? Yes. yes. Okay, we're going to do this. We're going to time it, see how long it takes. All right, Bob, go ahead and let it go. Deb, call 911. Okay. Stay close to the floor. I'll find Matthew. Matt. Matthew, come on. Come on with Dad. Come on. Hurry up. Get down on the floor. Stay close to the floor. Hurry up. Come on. That's it. Down on your hands and knees. You go ahead of me and go behind Mom. That's it. Okay, Deb. Let's go out to the porch. Matt will, Matt will follow Deb. Keep going, Matt. That's good. Very good. Keep your head close to the floor. Move a little quicker. There you go. Come on. Keep low to the... There you... Okay, let's go outside to the porch. We'll meet on the porch. We'll meet the firemen on the porch. Here we go. It's snowing out. <laughs> All right. There we go. Now, normally they have a meeting place that is just outside.
outside on the front yard a big tree, but obviously tonight with the weather, uh, we've stopped it right here. Come on in here. Uh, Arnie, do we know how long that went? I'm sorry? 42 seconds. That's pretty good, I guess. Great. Right, that's very good. Now, I think you've done this before, and it's taken under a minute or over it's a minute? It's taken under a minute. If you blindfold yourselves, it will take a little longer than the 42 seconds, but then it puts you more realistic in a dark smoke situation if you were blindfolded. Now, this is something every family can sit down, discuss with everyone, practice every once in a while. Yes. And uh, you'd be surprised when it's uh, dark at night, and that's when most fires break out, residential fires. 80% of the time, everybody is asleep. It's tough to see at night. You should get to know your route and That's where right. the furniture is and things like and it's that. it's very important not only to just have the plan, but to practice the plan, to work the plan out. Otherwise, you don't know if it will work. All right, you have Bob. to test it. Okay, thanks very much. And Deborah, thank you. And thank you, Matt, for uh, showing thank us you all this. Hopefully, this will uh, get some of you people out there involved. And this is a very good idea, something that you really should do. It doesn't cost anything. As long as you've got a working smoke detector to alert you at night, you can put this plan into effect. It could save your life. Irv, back to the studio on you. A terrific graphic demonstration of exactly what to do in case of a house fire, Keith. And, and another important point, and I think you mentioned it early, uh, is that if fire breaks out in the house, don't worry about valuables. Don't worry about changing your clothing or anything. The main thing is to get out as quickly as possible. And don't stop to find your jewelry or to find something else or get your suitcases. Get out. And once you get out of the house, don't go back in for any reason at all. You call the fire department right away and get out. Okay, thank you very much, Keith. So and minute, even if you feel you're out, even though you, you feel it's your outside door, always check the door for warmth. You might have taken the wrong turn, and you may be going through an inside door, not the outside door. And if you don't feel it's warm first, you may find That's a big right. surprise if on you, the other if side. If you put your hand up and that door is hot, there may be fire on the other side. Don't open it. Get out there. Sure. Have an alternate plan and get out that way or Fine. through the window. Okay, thanks, Keith and Mr. Piotrowski. Tonight, we take a look at a very important tool which, when properly used, could save your life and property if you are the victim of a fire. It was in the kitchen. In the kitchen from the, from the stove. They got me out of here. I thank God I'm alive. Fire's coming, guys. Now, is this something someone would have in their home, or is it more of something you'd find in a building, an uh, industrial building? Generally, you would find this more uh, in an industrial building, but in some cases, some people like myself do have it in, uh, in their homes. I have it near my fireplace. The fire extinguisher. Before you invest in one or more, consider where you might need them. Where would someone have one of these in their home? I mean, do you put it in the basement? Do you put it uh, in the laundry room, in the kitchen? Where, 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 where are the usual places? Probably in the garage area, if you have an attached garage. Uh, and around the kitchen area near the stove. That would probably be the best place. Another good spot would be around the furnace area. Fire extinguishers should be kept in a handy location and make sure that everyone in the family knows where they are and how to use them. Here's an easy way to remember. P-A-S-S, -S, pass. It means pull the pin, aim the nozzle at the base of the fire, squeeze the handle, and then sweep the nozzle from side to side. This is probably the one that you would find in the home the most. Uh, it's really simple to operate, very similar to the other one. You pull the pin, squeeze the trigger, and aim the stream of the chemical at the base of the fire. It even has a little bracket that it can be mounted to the wall with. A few final points on how to properly use fire extinguishers. Only use them after you have first called the fire department. Use if the fire is small and not spreading. Use if the fire is not between you and your exit. Read the label and make sure that you are using the correct type for what is burning. And make sure that you've checked the extinguisher. It is charged and working properly. All right, Paul, after you, let's see uh, what this thing can do now. Show people just how easy these things are to operate. Okay, the first thing you do is pull the pin. that keeps the handle locked. Got okay. Aim it. Now, here is something else that you might be interested in. There it is. It's called a Tot Finder sticker, and you place these on the outside of all children's bedroom windows in the home so firemen know where they might have to break into a burning home to save a child who maybe crawled under a bed or whatever. 
Also, in our live home fire drill on Eyewitness News at 6 o'clock, we told you to call the fire department as soon as your smoke detector goes off. Now, only do that if you have a telephone right beside you in the bedroom. All you have to do is dial 911 if you live in an area that has that emergency service enhancement. You don't even have to speak. Your address will automatically show up on the operator's screen, and if no one is on the line, the operator will then call the police department. And finally, if you'd like more information on fire safety, send a stamped, self-addressed envelope to Get Out Alive, WKBW-TV, 7 Broadcast Plaza, Buffalo, New York, 14202. And we'll be glad to send you safety pamphlets that are put out by New York State and Erie County Fire Safety Divisions. Terrifically valuable information. Yes, and tomorrow, uh, well, let's see, what's today? Wednesday, we've got two more days, so don't miss any of it. We've got a lot of stuff on smoke detectors that you need to know tomorrow, and then uh, we'll recap everything for you on Friday. Great. Single most important item when it comes to a fire in your home, the smoke detector. Now, the most recent figures from the National Fire Incident Reporting System show that the installation of a smoke detector will double your chance of survival. If you've got one of these in your home, you're ahead of the game. And if it works properly, you're even further ahead. One of the most important things you can do to help fireproof your home is to install and maintain smoke detectors. But you'd be surprised at how many people neglect that. Let's check out this house. All right, Robert, here we are down in the basement, lowest level of the house. First smoke detector. This house has three levels, including the basement, which is where we begin. Is it in the right place? You tell me. The smoke, because of its buoyant nature, would go up to the top of the stairwell, and that is where the smoke detector should be located. Secondly, it doesn't work. The way to test this is to push it, and if it makes a sound, it's operating properly. Now, this smoke detector obviously is not working. We tried it, doesn't work. Even though the little red dot is flashing here that's saying it should be okay. So, either the smoke detector has something wrong with it, or the batteries are no good. First off, check your battery. You can use one of these little home checkers, or you can take it into a store and have it checked. We put it on there like that, and you can see it's reading good. So obviously, if the battery is good, there's got to be something wrong with the smoke detector itself. All right, now, Robert, here in the kitchen, we've got another problem. This oven. Every time the oven is put on, the smoke detector up there goes off. So the battery's been taken out of it. Obviously, that's a bad idea to start it's, with. That is a bad idea. It's good to have a smoke detector on the main level of the house, but it should be located in a living area and not a cooking area. This one sounds like it's going to work properly. All right, here we are, up on the third level. Another smoke detector. Is that in the right place, up the top of the stairs? Yes, it is. This is in exactly the right location. This one is, uh, what do you call it, a hard wire? We call it a hard wire because it's, it's wired right into the electrical system. It's on 24 hours a day, and you never have to replace the battery. Out of three smoke detectors in this home, only one was properly installed and in working order. Don't let this happen to you, or your home could end up like this. Now, tonight on Eyewitness News Nightcast at 11 o'clock, we're going to look at the different types of smoke detectors on the market now and give you some tips on maintaining those units so you can be sure they'll warn you if fire breaks out in your home. And remember, once again, if you would like some further fire safety information, we will send you some special pamphlets courtesy of the State of New York and Erie County Fire Safety Division. Just send us a self-addressed stamped envelope to Get Out Alive, WKBW-TV, 7 Broadcast Plaza, Buffalo, New York, 14202. In other news, at the detectors stop. installed in your home, and how important it is to make sure that they work properly. Well, tonight, as I continue my series, Fire, Get Out Alive, a few tips for you on what to buy and how to maintain it. Now, buying a smoke detector is a pretty simple thing, but you do have a choice among models and manufacturers. They all have uh, LED on them to show that... Uh, the battery is good. Every so many seconds, the LED will, will flash. There's also a test button that you can press and uh, sound the smoke detector to be sure that the battery is, is good. And they still go from about $8 to $15. Okay, this is also a battery-operated smoke detector, as it says here, but it also has a, an added feature. It has an escape light. You know. There are 
two different kinds of detectors. Photoelectric. It operates with a beam of light that sounds an alarm when it's broken by smoke. And then the most common kind, ionization detectors, which sniff smoke particles in the air and then sound the alarm. There are also some detectors which operate on both the photoelectric and the ionization methods. It's a good idea to have one of each in your home, like Buffalo's Annie Moore did when fire broke out in her kitchen one night. It was in the kitchen, in the kitchen from the, from the stove. And uh, they got me out of here. But I wish every senior citizen would get a smoke detector and every family that have children because they is life savers. Now, here are a few tips on maintaining your smoke detectors. Batteries should be checked once a week by using the test button. Vacuum the dust away from the inside and outside at least once a year to avoid false alarms or malfunctions. Change the batteries once a year or when needed. And conduct a smoke test monthly by blowing smoke into the detector with a cigarette or a match. Now, tomorrow we're going to wrap up this week-long fire series, recapping everything that we have told you so far and show you the ultimate in fire safety for the home as well. And don't forget, we'll send you the special fire safety pamphlets we've been offering all week, put out by the state and Erie County Fire Safety Divisions. All you have to do is send us a self-addressed stamped envelope to Get Out Alive, WKBW-TV, 7 Broadcast Plaza, Buffalo, New York, 14202. And still ahead on Night Cat. Right, we're going to recap some of the things that you have learned this week in a special series, Fire, Get Out Alive. 80% of all fatal residential fires happen at night. If the smoke detector sounds or you smell smoke, arouse the family. Keep calm. If possible, call the fire department if you have a phone in your bedroom. Don't go looking for one. Roll out of bed and crawl onto the floor. Feel the door when you get to it in the bedroom, from the bottom to the top. Now, if it's hot at the top, don't open it. Go to the window and get out that way. But if the top of the door is not hot, open it carefully. While still on the floor, gather up the rest of the family down the hallway and then move along your practiced escape route. Report to your designated meeting place that's usually outside in front of the house by the street once you get out there. Now, if you haven't already done so, call the fire department at that time from a neighbor's house. Never go back inside of a burning building for any reason whatsoever. Now, here are a few other things to remember. A fire will be dark because of the smoke. Usually, it is the smoke and toxic fumes that will kill you, not the flames. And if you stand up in that burning room and you inhale the scorching air that's produced in the fire, you can die instantly. That's why you must keep low down where the air is cooler. Never stop to gather clothes or valuables because time is something that you have very little of. Get out as quickly and as safely as possible. Also, make sure that your smoke detectors are installed in the proper places and check them periodically to make sure that they work. It is also a good idea to get one or two fire extinguishers. CO2 are the best because they'll pretty much fight A, B, and C type fires most common around the home. Now here's another idea. If you're considering possibly building a new home in the near future, you might want to look at the ultimate in fire protection, for a home at least, a built-in sprinkler system. It works pretty much like a smoke detector does, but instead of detecting smoke, it detects heat. Now, while the sprinkler system is very effective, it is also very expensive, and it could cost three to $4,000 purchased and then installed in the home. Now, don't forget, we'd be glad to send you a series of fire safety pamphlets. All you have to do is send us a stamped, self-addressed envelope to Fire Get Out Alive, WKBW-TV, 7 Broadcast Plaza, Buffalo, New York, 14. 202. Those pamphlets, courtesy of the State of New York and the Erie County Department of Emergency Services, the Fire Safety Division. We will have that address for you a little bit later uh, again in this broadcast. He made alive. Now, we certainly hope that you have learned something from all of this, whether it be buying a smoke detector or checking the one you already have to make sure that it works. Maybe you've decided to come up with your own home fire drill, one that you can practice with your family so you can get out alive. This 11-part series took an awful lot of work, and we certainly couldn't have done it without the help of a lot of people. I would like to thank Erie County Executive Dennis Gorski for putting his staff at our disposal, Alan Rosso, his executive assistant as well. Also at the Erie County Fire Training Center in Cheektowaga, the Deputy Commissioner of Fire Safety, Robert Schultz, the Assistant Coordinator of the Fire Safety Division, Mr. James Guy. Captain Paul McGonaghy with the Buffalo Fire Department, along with the Trust Fire Equipment Company of Lancaster. Mr. Robert Newell, a New York State Fire Instructor. The Southline Fire Company and the Forks Fire Department, both in Cheektowaga. The local Red Cross, 
St. Bonaventure School in West Seneca, the Piotrowski family of Hamburg, where we did our live home fire drill the other night. Don and Janet Stokel of Amherst to let us show the sprinkler system that's been installed in their new home, and also my photographer on this series, Mr. Arnie Post. More than 80% of the fires in America break out in the home. What was that? Okay. Okay. I got to change air. I almost had a heart attack. Well, I, I wasn't really scared, just a little nervous. One final reminder now, if you would like a set of the special fire safety pamphlets that we have from the New York State, uh, fire Safety Division and also the Erie County Emergency Services Department. All you have to do is send us a self-addressed stamp envelope. To fire, get out alive, WKBW-TV, 7 Broadcast Plaza, Buffalo, New York, 14202. A musical